12 weeks ago, I woke up and I decided to build a UAV company. But as you can see, my plan is to make it a VTOL drone. Being only 19 years old, never having done anything with aerodynamics, engineering, electronics or programming, this idea was insanely ambitious. Seriously, having wings to drastically improve how long it can fly. But this week, after roughly four months of learning, developing and taking you guys along, everything has changed for this project. Welcome to Engineering a Drone Swarm Without Experience, Week 12. Someone reached out to me called Lewis. Hey, I really like your project and I might be able to help you out with securing a defense budget. I have a couple of contacts in DASA, which is a department within the UK government that funds innovative startups within the defense sector. I also know some people in Battle Lab UK, and I might be able to get you a few meetings with them. I got hyped right away. Being given this opportunity could allow for this project to become a reality regardless of what happens. But would you really think I stand a chance with my project at my age, at this early of a stage in the project, to getting a defense contract? There seems to be a lot of interest in UAVs lately, and I think you have a chance. But in case you are looking for a smaller amount of funding, I might be able to invest some personally. I will have some meetings with people to determine the viability of the drone. That is absolutely amazing. We are slowly approaching a stage where funding is going to be our biggest challenge and I have been trying to gather some funding ever since the project started, but I haven't really made too much progress yet. The only funding I managed to get um, this far is the two amazing Patreon subscribers. A huge shout out to Yuyu and Onur for subscribing and you guys of course can also do that for sneak peeks and stuff like that. So me and Lewis had a small shark tank moment. At first he offered 4000 for 10% of Navius. Uh, I did not I did not really want to give away parts of the company yet as we are at such an early stage and would undoubtedly increase the value of Navius hugely in the future. A little side note though, I realized that if he offered 4k for 10%, that meant the entire company would theoretically be worth 40,000, which at this early of a stage is really showing the potential of this project and the direction that we are headed to. Eventually we came to an agreement though, he will invest 4000 in return for 20% of the profit of the drone until 5.5 thousand is paid back to him. This is beneficial to us both because first of all he gets a nice 1.5k profit and we will have some funding to develop the drone which we have to pay back when we are actually selling and thus already making profit. He is currently setting up a contract for the deal and I will read it through with some people I know that are experienced with business and legal matters surrounding it. And when it's all good, I will be signing it and we will officially have some budget to actually start prototyping. So after settling on a deal, Lewis set out a meeting with me and someone called James Earl. The conversation we then had changed everything. Before I tell you the drastic changes we have made, it is important to understand who James Earl even is. James is a very well connected person that based on his LinkedIn page with 15,000 followers, that's a lot to me, started his career as a Chinook pilot, I don't know how you pronounce that, started his career as a Chinook pilot in the Dutch defense. Now if you didn't know, I'm Dutch too, nice. He then went on to being a Chinook pilot for the Royal Air Force, which is the UK if you didn't know. You could say he knows his Chinooks. But then it gets even more interesting. Senior Director Business Development in Aviation Services, where he managed global client and supplier relationships and drove new business lead development and initial project startup for global aviation augmentation programs. <laughs> Holy shit. Then he became <laughs> then he became head of global sales in Modini where he was responsible for the new business development for commercial application of medium altitude long endurance UAVs. Sounds familiar. He then worked at Dove Air where he provided strategic platform technology and development support. And I know I said this already but trust me now it becomes really interesting. James is the co-founder of One Way Aerospace. They make defense drones that look like this and as you can see it is a canard plane just like we plan to do as well. 
One-Way Aerospace is currently upgrading their production capabilities to 500 units per month and is aiding in actual warfare as we speak right now. Currently they have 50 to 200 employees, so you could say that James, my guy, he did something right. He then went on doing some other stuff, but I think you guys get it now. He is an experienced guy and he has a lot of connections. And I was about to have a meeting with him. Look, I honestly expected him to give some insane critique on my project because I'm really inexperienced and he knows his stuff much better. It is like showing Einstein a theory you came up with in the shower, uh, but we have to face the truth. So drained in sweat, I just did it. I started the call with him. All in all, I was very surprised how nice he was and the fact that he actually seemed quite positive about my project. He didn't tell me to pack my bags and sell my YouTube channel like some of the comments told me. No, he actually said he thinks it's quite promising, which is so good to hear from someone that actually knows his stuff. That's very motivating. And also to everyone in the team, that should tell something about what you guys have done as well. Now, of course, he gave some feedback on what we are currently doing and basically all of his points I agreed on and they are very good points to consider. It is very easy to forget some of the simple higher level things that you need to keep in mind when starting a business or when developing something. And I'm going to share the knowledge that this kind fellow gave me with all of you. So let's make a list of points to talk about here. First, use case. He advised against becoming a defense contractor actually, and he thinks we should rethink the purpose of our drone. Two, aerodynamics. Should we just quit researching and go with a conventional design? Three, flight controller. We should consider just getting a Pixhawk instead of making our own PCB, which hurts, but we have to think it through. Four, the market. What markets are available to tap into as of now? So if you're starting a drone company, be sure you're there for this point, cause that might be useful for you too. Point number one, use case. He asked me what the use case was for my drone, to which I said what I said in this series as well, helping in defense, delivering packages in hard to reach locations like the Gaza Strip to deliver food and search and rescue missions. I also said I want the drone to be modular so that it can be multi-purpose. People can just add extensions in the future so that we can tap into multiple markets. And of course, people would not waste our money on something they can only use for one thing. Now, his critique to this was that it's quite hard making a multi-purpose drone. First of all, we don't send a Boeing 737 above the ocean when someone's missing. We have specialized planes made for that purpose. If you would make it multi-purpose, some purpose would have to sacrifice. Like it might be a jack of all trades, but it would be a master of none. Why is this though? Well, for example, the wings alone, they have an airfoil and they're best at a certain speed, they're most efficient at a certain speed, and for some purposes you need a lower speed, and for some other purposes you need a higher speed. And for example, the electric motors would also be most efficient at a certain speed. So those are all issues that would arise. So, like he said, one purpose would have to sacrifice efficiency to make sure the other purpose would do better, or all of the purposes would have an inefficient drone. I don't know, it's just really hard to do. So especially in the beginning, we need one focus so that we can work on that first. Now, our focus was delivering package to the Gaza Strip and to Ukraine for humanitarian reasons, but that would mean that we would solely be dependent on crowdfunding, which is hard to do. It's possible though. Defense is hard as right now many drone startups are competing to get a contract uh, or to get funding and it is very hard to be the one. He said it might be possible nowadays to just send drones to Ukraine to prove it before getting a defense budget. And I mean, who am I to disagree? He has actually worked in defense with defense uh, for similar reasons to mine in the past. Um, so maybe we should indeed go with the commercial route. Also, it is a bit better morally as well because making war capable drones is morally complex and politically complex. And it could also cause some dangers in terms of cybersecurity and stuff like that. So I don't think we'll do that for now. By the way, the UK defense did reply and they said that there is currently no open calls for the specific thing that we need. Um, so we need to pick a commercial application. Much easier to find investors. Later down the line you can expand, but the initial drone needs to be going first so that a success first so that the business can already at least sell something. We will go over some of the commercial markets that he recommends tapping into in the fourth point, uh, but we will decide on one and you guys can help by giving suggestions, but just wait until that part or skip it through. 
because we have arrived at point number two, aerodynamics. The drone will most likely end up looking somewhat like the Foxtech AYK250. This design is very common and it is actually the first ever design that I came up with on this channel on the first video and I actually watched that first video and it caused an existential crisis because I was thinking what progress did we really make? Now we did make progress but in terms of aerodynamics that what he is about to say is a very good point that we kind of forgot about or at least I did. Aerodynamics don't often allow for a lot of innovation based on the rules of physics. The real innovation we can achieve is mostly around the systems because I mean how likely is it that we end up with something else and something innovative and better in some way when NASA and huge companies basically tried everything at this point? These are some good fresh questions to think about. Many drone startups actually fail because they try to innovate on aerodynamics and the weird designs and plane configurations but but I mean the fact a lot of them fail says enough right? Should we even attempt it? Is it even necessary? I don't think so. I mean, how feasible is it for us to just skip a lot of steps and take the most commonly used design, knowing it is good, uh, maybe change some bits for it to be better for our purpose, like the airfoil and dihedral and whatnot, and then we can just build it and use that. I think the Aero team mostly agreed with this idea, also based on the trade study we did last video, which also suggested that the traditional design is most efficient and they got to work right away. Jonathan was keeping us on topic uh, as we often kept skipping some steps like doing CFG before doing aerodynamic analysis in OpenVSP which we were meant to do to perfect that first. Thank you Jonathan, it must be frustrating for you sometimes. Talking about Jonathan, I'm actually very happy with his help and last week I asked him if I can do anything in return. Uh, he said my blender skills may come in handy for his project, so I made this for him. Pretty cool, right? Anyways, so Nicholas, Barrick and Klitz were building a design in OpenVSP. This design. Now in my opinion, I actually quite like the design. I cannot see any problem with it besides maybe the fuselage is not being big enough for the internal payload volume that we set as a goal last video somewhere, or a few videos before that actually, but that should be an easy fix. This design, I think Nicholas made it, gave me a really really good idea. James said that you can't really innovate too much on aerodynamics, right? And it is hard to make a jack of all trades because of that. And I would agree, but just look at my idea here, okay? The main wing and the till are all at the top of the fuselage. Now what if we just make the fuselage detachable? So that the customer can just buy a different wing and till setup that is more optimized for the speed and mission that the customer wants. This would allow it to be a jack of all trades anyways, and it would allow for the drone to be converted to any purpose later on. I'm actually a very big fan of this idea, and I don't see a problem with it just yet, so please let me know in the comments what you think. The only issue might be that you cannot change the most efficient point of the motor by changing the wings, but I don't know how strict the range is between how efficient a motor is at certain speeds, so we would have to look into that. So anyways, we are making some really good progress and it's all becoming very promising to me. I'm really happy with the Aero team and that we're actually getting some tangible progress and some actual ideas, like it is actually getting very close. I, why do I say actually so much? Listen, it's getting very close so that we can actually build it in real life. That's cool to me. Uh, point number three flight controller. We have been developing our own flight controller with proprietary software. Uh, the Navius AeroCore is what we're calling it. Xenos has mainly been responsible for the PCB and he has done some insane work and we already reached the stage of ordering a dev board of the PCB with a bore vessel printed on it of course. Watch last video if you don't get it or just watch all of the videos, that's pretty good for my views, right? So this topic is very very painful because of the effort that Xenos and Witch and uh, Joshua and the entire software development team put into this entire thing. But James advised against reinventing this wheel, as you can just buy a Pixhawk flight controller with a cube. Um, this is just an off-the-shelf flight controller that is so capable and is backed by the entire Arduino community that he thinks it's just very hard to compete with that. 
And for what reason? It might not be adding much worth by competing it. And especially for the minimal benefit that it could give us. He thinks it's better to just focus on the offline navigation system and uh, things like that rather than the flight controller itself. The Pixhawk setup is sold very often so the profit margins are quite low. Like I said, this is very painful if we would decide to throw away the progress and use the Pixhawk instead. And honestly guys, because I have so much trust in the electronics and software development team, I am going to go against this advice for this one. And trust me, it's not about emotion. I genuinely considered not continuing developing our own. No, we are still going to continue developing it. And I'll tell you why. The Navius AeroCore is meant to become better. It is meant to be the apple of flight controllers with a sleek UI, plug and play to use, and like everything else on the drone, entirely modular. You can buy attachments on the website to put on your flight controller and unlock capabilities like image recognition, offline navigation, different radio receivers, and so much more. It will be hard to make, but I think we can do better than the Pixhawk in the same way as an Android phone has more freedom and more open source software available, but Apple is more robust, user-friendly, trustworthy, safe, and it provides a big ecosystem that works together amazingly. So yes, in the name of ambition, let's take on this challenge head-on. And Xenos, Witch, Joshua that is making the offline navigation, and everyone else in the software and electronics team, big shout out to you guys, I know we can do this. And you guys watching at home can also apply by the way, the link is in the description. And sorry James, but I'm going to try. Going to point number four, market. So what market should we go into if we don't do defense? Well, he mentioned that there are currently not really any European camera and gimbal manufacturers for UAVs. He really thinks there is a market in that. He also said that us making quite a big fixed wing UAV is also quite unique in Europe, as we have usually made quadcopters without wings or just smaller UAVs. So I mean, that's good. We're unique somewhere. There also seems to be a big market in computer vision, object detection and stuff like that. All in all, it is something we are going to have to think through ourselves as well, but what are the requirements? Because we actually want to have a market that has a whole business case that we can actually get investments from for selling the entire drone. So the requirements, there should be a business that earns money with providing a service with these drones. Two, there should not be unbeatable competition yet. And three, there should be a big enough market for it, obviously. Now, of course, we can tap into multiple markets, but I think, and he also advised to just focus on one market first to secure investments and make a good drone for that purpose at least. So what will that initial market be? For what? For that, I will ask you guys to leave suggestions, but I have a few ideas myself as well. Buckle up. Here's some ambition. Firstly, the most ambitious idea that I'm thinking of now is maybe we can make a drone that can scout for people in trouble or it can deliver help to people in trouble on big mountains where helicopters can't reach because of the thin air. For example, Mount Everest. Many people die there because they're lost or something and usually we'll know until it's too late. If we can have a bunch of drones flying around there, they may be able to find some people that need help with the thermal cameras. Then they can notify people on the ground. Now, what if we come up with a way to also deliver packages to these people that are in trouble mid-flight? Because the air is too thin for the props to work, uh, so we would have to use the wings and move all the time. But if we manage to find a way to deliver something accurately enough to the person in need, we could give them something to warm them up, or we can send food and other necessities until people finally come over to save him or her, or if the person is already back and healthy to continue walking on his own but he's lost, then we can maybe lead the way with some lights so that it can follow the right path back to safety. I think this idea could be very nice and very useful and we could actually save lives with that. The only issue is the potentially rather small market and surely quite hard to do. Another market we can go into is surveillance of large parameters by having a bunch of drones fly around with cameras and I think this is very doable especially as we have a lot of range planned and we have the drone swarm capabilities of course. I have some more ideas but this video is getting really long so if you guys have some ideas please let me know in the comments and if you think my ideas were good already please let me know too and why or why not. Thank you.